Security Leader Bonasek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the minutes of July 6th and August 3rd, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you again. I move to vote collectively on agenda item numbers 21 through 28. Second. Discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay, are there any referrals, withdrawals, or consents? Okay, let's go on. A, receive and file. B, receive and file. Agenda item number one. Say respondent second candidates. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature regarding environmental quality review with respect to New York State Town Law Article 5 petition for the division of a town of Monroe to create the new town of Palm Tree or other suitable name identified by the Orange County Legislature and the town of Monroe, classifying the action as unlisted and determining that the action could have a significant adverse environmental impact pursuant to New York State Environmental Quality Review Act CEQA and Orange County Charter Section 2.02Q. Before we have discussion on this, I will remind everyone this is this vote requires a simple majority, 11 votes, not 14. Okay, as does number two. All right, discussion. Legislator Hines. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As uh, many of you know that sit on the Rules Committee with me, I've uh, beaten the seeker proposal uh, to death, I would say, and I'd like to uh, draw everybody's attention to it since it's in front of you. I'll start by referring to uh, part one, page five. Everybody a chance to get there. The answers uh, on this document were changed at, at uh, my request and, and voted on by the entire committee. And I'll refer you to on page five, uh, small letter C. Will the proposed action use or create a new demand for water? Yes. Will the proposed action obtain water from existing public water supply? Yes. Does the existing public water supply have capacity to serve this proposal? No. Is the project site in the existing district? Yes. Is the district, if is expansion of the district needed? Yes. And when we drop down, in that same category would be uh, the bottom of that same box with small letter C. Proposed source of supply for the new district, Mountainville Wellfield, prospective New York State Catskill Aqueduct TAP. And I want to make sure that everybody knows that that is in litigation and currently being argued in the appellate division, I believe, this week. Uh, so that water is not there. Uh, it's in litigation. So how can construction go on when the village of KJ admits right now that they're trucking water in to support their current needs? Yes, there's construction going on over by the state police barracks now in the property that is included in the 164 acres. So for that reason and for others, I, since this has come about, I've called for a full environmental review and I still do that as we stand here today. I'll also refer you to part two, page three of the Seeker study. And when we look at small letter B in the center of the page, the statement is water supply demand from the proposed action may exceed safe and sustainable withdrawal capacity rate of the local supply or aquifer. And the box that checks says moderate to large impact may occur. That scares me. We drop in the same box to small letter H. Other impacts, extension of water services may result in impacts to groundwater supply in areas of well fields, particularly in the town of Cornwall. For those of you who don't know it, that's where I live, that's where I was born, and that's where I choose to raise my family. Uh, that, to me, again, calls for a full environmental <coughs> impact review. The opportunity for us to address Seeker is now. If anybody thinks that the new town of Palm Tree is going to do a full-blown Seeker on any proposed buildings, I tend to doubt it. The current village of KJ rarely submits 239 reviews, where the county would have an option of stepping in and reviewing things. Uh, there's insufficient groundwater. I cannot support this Seeker. It's insufficient to the project and I will be voting no on the seeker issue. 
I urge all of you to do the same. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, welcome. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? No. Benelli? Yes. Cheney? Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? No. Ekis? No. Fagione? Yes. Hines? No. Eminence? Yes. Kulasek? No. O'Donnell? Paduk? No. Ruskevich? Sullivan? No. Vero? Yes. Brescia? Yes. 13 ayes, 8 noes, motion passes. Okay, resolution number two. Legislators Amo and Bonasek, resolution of the Orange County Legislature granting the petition for the division of the town of Monroe, County of Orange, State of New York, to create the new town of Palm Tree and the town of Monroe, and submitting the proposition to a vote of the qualified electors of the town of Monroe, County of Orange, New York, to be held at the biennial election of the town of Monroe on the 7th day of November, 2017, pursuant to New York State Town Law, Article 5. Okay, Legislator Anagnus Dacus, then Legislator Kemnitz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Amazing to see the crowd here today. I applaud them all for being concerned citizens and being out here. Kind of reminds me of the old days of the Ballad You Wish. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the last couple of months, I think I've talked to more my legislative colleagues lobbying them, trying to convince them what I think the right vote is, more of them than any other time other than maybe the time that we had the Valley View issue. But before I talk about what I think the right vote is, I want to do a few things. Number one, I want to praise the legislative chairman, Mr. Brescia, for everything he did to get us to where we are today. He took a lot of, let me call it BS, from a lot of people was not deserved. I think without his efforts, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be at what someone called the historic moment in Orange County. So that, for that again, I praise him and I want to give myself a little credit. I thank him for listening to me to allow the United Monroe Citizen Group to be part of those negotiations and talks. That United Monroe Citizens Group represents the people of Monroe. In the last few local elections, that organization has garnered over 95% of the vote in those local elections. Think of that, 95% of the vote. Don't tell me they don't represent the people of Monroe. So I commend them for everything they did in those negotiations. Their efforts were unpaid, totally volunteer efforts. Every one of them are commended. I want to also commend the people and the leaders of the village of Curious Joel. They sat and negotiated and quite frankly gave up concessions that I wouldn't have believed that they would give up. I believe all in an effort to get peace in Orange County, there to be commended. Now having said all that, I want to make it clear what we're doing here today. We're not here to take a vote on what most people are talking about. The pros and cons of separation or creating a new town are not what is at issue on this legislature tonight. I believe what all of us should be considering is what each and every one of us did. I raised my hand and took an oath. I said, I, Mike and Agnostakis, will defend and uphold the Constitution of the state of New York. I think that's what we're voting on today. Will we defend and uphold the Constitution of the state of New York? That Constitution says any citizen has the right to petition their local government for referendum. Don't believe it? Go to Article 1, Section 9 of the New York State Constitution. Once they petition us for that referendum, we check that out, make sure 
it passed all applicable laws and was done correctly, and then we give them the right to referendum. Or does someone want to tell me that certain people of the state of New York don't have that constitutional right that all the rest of us have? Because if you tell me that, there's something wrong. The Constitution that I swore to uphold also gives local governments the power of home rule. Again, don't believe me? Go to Article 9, Section 2. The people of Monroe should be deciding their fate. It's not what I say. That's what the New York State Constitution says that I took an oath to uphold. So, before we all take this vote, to my Democratic colleagues, I want to offer the words of Robert Kennedy, who said, the right to vote is the easiest of all rights to grant. The right to vote is the easiest of all rights to grant. To my Republican colleagues, I want to offer the words of Ronald Reagan to consider before you vote. The right to vote is the crown jewel of American liberties. The right to vote is the crown jewel of American liberties. And to my independence colleague, I have no quote, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I suspect he will vote to give the people of Monroe the right to vote. So, as far as myself, I will vote to uphold the Constitution. I will vote to allow the people their permiss permissive referendum. And I will vote to allow every citizen of Monroe to have the right to determine their own destiny. Thank you very much. I was remiss about asking that all legislators that want to speak, speak first before another, any legislator speaks a second time. Uh, Myrna, you have the floor. I'm very glad that you went through all of the formal stuff. I'm speaking from the heart on this one. Um, the vote that we're about to take this evening is about my community. It will affect my neighbors, my family, and me very personally. As I've walked and talked to voters while gathering more than 900 signatures on petitions this summer, it has become very clear to me that most of the people in Monroe, most of my neighbors, indeed the majority of the people in Monroe, favor the division of the town. Those in KJ want to protect their way of life, and those on the other side of Monroe's divide <coughs> are concerned about protecting the public school system, as am I, the values of our town government, as am I, and our environment, as am I. As you vote this evening, I would ask you to go by a simple rule. It's the golden rule, do unto others. The people of Monroe are asking for the ability to vote to declare their own fate. Vote yes to give that right, as you would want us to give you that right if you were in our place. Some of you have talked about procedure as though that is the most important thing. And that's a reason to vote no? No. Please remember that in a democracy, the procedure that matters the most is the act of voting. The very essence of democracy is the right of people to live under the government that they choose. So please reaffirm the right of the people of Monroe and vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's been a long road, and someone had said and acknowledged the fact that this has been on our desks for almost exactly the anniversary, a year, September 12th last year. When first presented with this petition, 
my first instincts as I went through the petition and looked through it in the legislative office was that we were being asked to allow the voters of Monroe to have an opportunity, an opportunity that was very rare to them. Because before they were dealing with annexation and all types of different legal issues, and those were determined by municipal boards. This creation of a new town, a separate town, is being, will be done by the voters of Monroe themselves. It will not be done by us. What we are doing here is we are allowing it to be put on the referendum for the people in Monroe to have that opportunity. Now granted, this is more of a county issue and we recognize that, but that's what the law states. And we did not rush through this as many of you, some people may want you to believe. We certainly did not. We've taken our time to provide the Monroe voter with as much information as we possibly can. As the chairman of the Rules Committee since last September, or actually previous to that, but since this came on our desk, I have made sure that this was an agenda item consistently up until this August meeting when we took the vote to vote it out of committee. The legislators, to their credit, each and every one of the people sitting up here did not take these decisions and did this issue lightly. Many of them were, all of them were invited to attend and many did attend and many of them did engage in the conversations that took place at those particular meetings that were open to the public. And while we went through the various different months, we've exhausted all avenues of discussions relating to traffic, environment, <laughs> politics, finances, and the list can go on and on. But it all came back to one question, to allow the voters the opportunity to have their opinion heard at the polls in November. That brings us to today. And through a constructive dialogue with the village of Curious Joel, municipal leaders, and members of the community who have arrived, we have arrived at an opportunity to make a substantial change in the way we as a county handle the growing population. Our failed practices of lawsuit after lawsuit have done nothing for the betterment of Orange County and certainly the southern region of Orange County. And in fact, all it has done is cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars, taxpayers' dollars that each and every one of us pay. And now we have the chance to stand up, and as somebody said, this may not be perfect, but we can make a different direction. We can make that decision. I think we owe it to all the taxpayers to move in that direction by allowing the electorate of Monroe to decide their future. I was at a meeting recently with another elected official, and Mr. Castro, my former colleague in the legislature, you'll like this, he was asked, if this were your town, how would you want the legislature to vote? Well, I don't need to tell you what his answer was. And throughout this time, this dialogue, many conditions have come forth because we sat down and we communicated with one another. We now have an agreement that, as Assemblyman Skoof has mentioned, is contingent upon a positive vote in November. The county, however, is not a signatory to this. This is something between the United Monroe and the village of Curious Joel. And we talked about no annexations of land in Monroe and Blooming Grove and the dropping of the 507 acre lawsuit. There's also ongoing meetings and conversation with the leadership in Woodbury. As a matter of fact, there are future meetings set to talk about the settlement of their lawsuits and other issues of pertinence to them. And through the efforts of Assemblyman Scoofus, with his bipartisan fashion addressing this particular thing, we are also talking about a commitment to entertain a protective boundary as it relates to the county-owned Gonzaga property in Blooming Grove, Woodbury, and Monroe. And probably, for me, one of the most important issues, not only for Monroe, but for Blooming Grove, Woodbury, uh, Cornwall, and Chester, is the action taken most recently, actually the evening after our Rules Committee meeting, had it to do with the Monroe Woodbury School District regarding amending the boundaries to mirror that of the new proposed town. One thing we should all learn from this process is that communication is key. And we, when we take the chance to open our minds and not only be a good communicator, but a good listener, 
Together we can establish a trust that will enable us to do great things and make a difference in our community. This vote today, if it does pass, will allow the voters in Monroe to cast their ballot in November. But from this moment forward, those people sitting in these front rows right here, you are now being tasked to get that message out there. As Ms. Convair said, there's a lot of misinformation and I know that you people are gonna be working very, very hard to correct that and give them the proper information. Over here, we have the future of Monroe. You are going to also be tasked with getting the information out there that you have been working on to inform your voters. So this is a joint effort. This is a partnership in making a major difference in the southern part of Orange County, if not of all of Orange County. And if this passes or if it doesn't, there's many things ahead for us to work on. The issues that were brought up that really don't pertain to this vote, as we've said, we're just beginning. So while this may be, this is just a step along the way. We have a long road to go. And I think that an awareness that we have now that we never had before is the idea that we can work together. And if we continue to communicate and work in the vein of cooperation that we've had since the beginning, I think we will be able to achieve those goals. And I thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chairman. First, I need to correct the, the record. Um, I'm no longer a certified referee. I've lost my ability to run up and down the court chasing those little guys. <laughs> I think it's always exciting and encouraging when so many people step up to the microphone and uh, talk about how they feel about an issue. Um, you know, whether it's uh, palm tree or CPV, uh, when the people get engaged in the issue, government works best. Um, I also want to say that as the minority leader, I have been tasked with my caucus to make sure that they heard from all sides. So we did that. We met with uh, United, United Monroe, I believe, twice. We met with uh, KJ Alliance, KJ Leadership, and we met with the municipalities involved in this issue. Government works best when solutions are the result of an open process that involves all interested parties, but especially does not exclude the elected officials that represent the people. Democratic legislators have been unified in criticizing the process that has yielded these resolutions and how they relate to the CEQA and petition to form the new town of Palm Tree. My personal opinion was that a study should have been funded with testimony by experts allowing for rigorous debate of many issues surrounding this decision. Sadly and surprisingly, that suggestion did not attract the support to be considered. Authors of the current deal claim a now or never pointing to two year cycles or you're either part of the problem or part of the solution. Both these claims can easily be debunked. An Albany law would easily allow for the petition to be put on the ballot at any time, and it, it is childish to label those that disagree with you as part of the problem. Because the problem is that this agreement was negotiated behind closed doors with a political party, while all but three legislators were prevented from participating. Negotiations that eliminate the legislators that were elected to office by the voters is bad government. Supporting this would only encourage more of the same. Let me give you a few examples of what is possible when the process is open, debated, scrutinized, and when the advice of experts is sought and considered in making the final decision. The question of whether to demolish or renovate the Orange County Government Center was settled as a result of a two-month investigation. Experts testified under oath, and the decision to renovate saved the taxpayers many millions of dollars. The decision to keep Valley View as a county-owned and operated facility was the result of the same process. 
everyone can now agree that an in-depth study enabled the legislature to identify the necessary changes that took the facility from a $15 million deficit to a $5 million surplus. By the way, we were told, or it was predicted, that today the deficits were going to be $30 million. So be wary of backroom statements. I would also mention that an engaged and educated public forced the veto of the ill-advised misde misdemeanor asset forfeiture law, but only after they had an opportunity to participate in the debate as the legislature sent it back to committee several times before it passed on the floor. Whether we were discussing the forming of the town of Palm Tree, the CPV power plant, and associated pipelines, or any other issues impacting the lives of the citizens of Orange County, it should be an open process with a sincere desire to know the facts and make decisions that are in the best interest of the people. The nonpartisan Blue Ribbon Citizen Foundation organization offered to do a study many months ago. Such a study would have produced the data necessary for a much improved result. A result that would have addressed all these problems that the current settlement fails to consider. So to be clear, clear, I am not saying no to a solution. I am saying no to a backroom process that is in conflict with my sense of what good government for the people, by the people, is all about. And good government would produce a better solution. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm quite relieved uh, for a moment. Mr. Nagasakis was quoting different uh, public officials on each party line, and I was worried. But I kind of hope maybe he'd quote Mike Bloomberg and give me a real feeling that I was doing the right thing. But he didn't do that, but boy, was I afraid he was going to quote Ross Perot <laughs> and, ask me, and ask me to look under the hood. Uh, and he didn't do that. So thank you, Mike. Yes, it's about the referendum, and that's really what it's about. I, I, I couldn't agree more with what people are saying. And I think Senator Scoofus uh, really drove home, you know, the concept of contingency, and I, I, that really was impressed on my mind. And all I can conclude at this point is, fellow legislators, it's about time to embrace this issue. For 19 years, I've been in this legislative body, and I can go countless one, member, one issue after another, starting with sewer for the now Walmart project to fire uh, bill departments on down the line where every time an issue came up, we were in conflict. We always were litigating, we were always fighting, and we never could get any discussion. I can think of the lone votes that I made, we've had here, where it'd be 20 to one, where I'd be opposing my colleagues because I didn't think they wanted to solve the problem. They're dealing with political issues. So I welcome this, this referendum, this vote to allow a referendum. For that, certainly, but more importantly, when, when Mike Egan and I have talked about the 10-year the um, time period for annexation, what, what resonated to me was maybe we now will have 10 years to begin to think about the future of Orange County. Maybe we as legislators will start pushing the reasonable, communication process of the, of the municipalities, the regional planning ideas to get people to talk together to deal with the issues that confront the southern part of the county. That's really our challenge. Can we get all the municipalities that are there beginning to collaborate and work towards the interest of all? And that's the exciting part of this agreement. Yes, it's about a referendum, and yes, it may not pass, but I'm going to predict, and some people know, I'm going to predict that I'll give you eight to five odds if this passes tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I uh, take the Constitution very serious as well, and I think no matter how I vote tonight, uh, I still will uphold the Constitution. Uh, I'm the uh, legislator that uh, got the $200,000 resolution passed to support the towns and villages to support the litigation, uh, which probably brought United Monroe to this table today, 
So I applaud United Monroe for their work in, uh, in bringing this together for the residents of Monroe. But where I feel left out is being a resident of Cornwall and my district is Cornwall, Blooming Grove, and Windsor. And in my first term, I represented a portion of Woodbury. And the constituents that I speak to are not in favor of this. And I represent 18,300 people, as most of us do on average. So I'm voting for them. Uh, the 164 acres, although that's been moved into the village of KJ with respect to the maps, there's current litigation going on with that. That litigation is not settled. It's under appeal. And this legislature and those eight municipalities spent a lot of money on that litigation. It's not done. We're paying for it. Uh, at the uh, public hearing, I heard a lot of people speak. Many people that didn't live in Monroe opposed this deal for, for their own reasons, but for their own communities. Uh, here, many people spoke that it doesn't matter if this goes through. It doesn't, the environment's not affected. Well, it sure is, and it's affected because of the zoning. The zoning in the current village of KJ does not match the zoning in the town of Monroe. We all know that. It's high density housing. And that brings us to sewer capacity. When you look at the Harriman Wastewater Treatment Plant, that sewer capacity is obtained on a first come, first serve basis. Well, there's massive construction going on over by the state police barracks right now. That's probably going to get the first come, first serve sewer. It's an environmental nightmare. You heard my comments on Seeker. I still stand by them. Uh, with respect to the 10 year moratorium, I think it's. Uh, not really of any use. Our own planning commissioner, David Church, told us that it would take at least 13 to 15 years for the town of Palm Tree to build out the uh, property that we're talking about today. That's more than 10 years. Uh, doesn't really help us. Also, it's not legally binding. Just as we have a petition before us today of citizens that wanted to annex land, Anybody that lives anywhere in Orange County can do the same thing right now with the required number of signatures. So that uh, wasn't negotiated properly. Uh, again, I applaud Monroe. I understand you're protecting your school district. It makes sense to Monroe. This does not make sense to Cornwall. It does not make sense to Blooming Grove. There's not the proper protection in place. Uh, I know this is going to pass today, um, and I hope that uh, I still have the respect of United Monroe and the Monroe Board and the Village of KJ for that matter because I'll still work to solve any problems with you in the future. I stood with United Monroe since I was elected uh, all along. I didn't change. My position is the same. I understand why you changed. You're all smart, hardworking, intelligent people. I commend you all, but I cannot vote for this today. Thank you. Thank you. Let me start by saying um, the intent of the discussion process that the chairman embarked on a number of months ago was to bring people together to talk. It was something that hasn't happened in the past, and I believe he broke new ground. The intent was not to strike any deal, but at this time, we need to build on those talks. However, this needs to be more about the future than the past. I empathize with neighboring municipalities and their residents who feel left out of discussions that preceded this vote. But allowing the vote in November to create the town of Palm Tree must be the beginning of a new approach to communication and open discussion amongst all the impacted municipalities. We must learn from the past and create a new model of cooperation and communication to take us forward. As I vote today, I commit as a member of this legislature to see that effective communication continues in the future with the local municipal leaders at the forefront. The issues and difficult future decisions that face us can only be resolved by all of us working together. Thank you. Good evening. For those of you who don't know me, I just want to give you a little background. Um, I served for several years on the ZBA 
in the town of Walk Hill, and I also chaired their master plan review committee. Been on the, I've been a school board member for 21 years. I served as the president of the Orange County School Board member, uh, School Board Association. I also chaired a resolutions committee for the New York State School Boards Association, and that's the committee that sets their uh, legislative platforms. I have been the driving force for the ward system for school boards here in New York State. I have been, in that capacity, working tire tirelessly as a volunteer for all public school children, not just in Pinebush, but in New York State. That bill is now sitting on the governor's desk, and we are waiting patiently for his signature. Talk about politics. I have learned a lot about politics since the introduction of that ward system bill. In my capacity as school board member, I need to look at the big picture. I have to think beyond 10 years. And it's not just for one school district, but I have a responsibility to look beyond 10 years for every single school district in Orange County. Now I've been told that we, not, we are not voting on an agreement between a religious-based municipality and a civic group of laymen, but that we are only voting on whether or not to let the people of Monroe decide their own fate. I can't do that without considering that fate, without considering the outcome of its impact on Orange County, both now as well as in the future. In this case, more than 10 years from now. This forces me to consider that we would be allowing the fate of the well-being of not one of our municipalities, but all of our municipalities and the entire county to be in the hands of a group of residents who are not elected officials and therefore not democratically chosen to make decisions or act on behalf of the constituents of Monroe or anywhere else. In the end, when something goes wrong, the residents will look towards the county and say, how could you have let that happen? You are asking us to make a decision based on a handshake deal of which the county as a whole was not represented. Yes, some of the legislators were at the table, but they only represented their districts, not the county as a whole. The first thing I was taught as a public servant is that if you are not at the table, you're on the menu. <laughs> this applies to surrounding municipalities as well as the county as a whole. This is a county issue. And as a county legislator, I refuse to rush it through as if it were not. This can be voted on every two years, along with the town board elections. It does not have to be voted on in a year with the entire county legislature, as well as the county executive and sub several other positions are up for re-election. Why? Why this year? Because I know that several county legislators are basing their votes on threats of competition. And I don't blame them for this, but it only adds to the faulty process, that rush and the threatening process. Other elected officials not close to the boundaries of KJ or Monroe have asked for a seat at the table and were not given one. I agree that too many cooks would spoil the broth, which brings me right back to my original argument that I might feel more comfortable with an agreement where the county as a whole was involved in steering this uh, negotiation. I'm sorry that the leadership did not step forward to do this. That was out of my control. Monroe could be politically independent based on a handshake agreement. Do you seriously believe this? The lies and deceit surrounding the Chestnut Ridge development in Bloomingburg has taught me and my constituents not to trust any gentleman's agreement. It has also taught me that you can't 100% trust any agreement that is made behind closed doors 
by elected or non-elected officials. A 10-year blank check will build a stronger foundation, a stronger coalition, and a stronger voting bloc. I was elected to represent my constituents. If I give that up, I am relinquishing my responsibility. It would be against my morals to do this. Maybe some of you won't be here in 10 years, but I will. If you have an infant at home, do you think your child's education will be safeguarded by the time he gets to middle school? That will be after 10 years. Will United Monroe or any other group similar to United Monroe be around to make another deal for you then? What is the plan after 10 years? Will all the other surrounding school districts then be at risk? Without even a ward system for them, they are doomed. And the very people who are negotiating this deal have lobbied against a ward system in New York State. You need to ask the question, why? Why won't they give all school boards in New York State the right to have equal representation? Why? We've been called out by others for not having another plan. How could you vote no without another plan? Well, here's a plan. Why not give Kira Joel their own county? The smallest <laughs> county, I'm serious and I don't mean to be facetious here, the smallest county in New York State is Hamilton County and they have under 5,000 residents. So the population should not be a problem. I'd like to challenge our state legislators to research this. I'll support it, why not? You can have your own county, you just can't have mine. Before I start, I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Anagnostakis for mentioning Bobby Kennedy, my, one of my very few political heroes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, and I'd also uh, like to thank the guy whose name I don't know, who had that creative response, and I'd like to talk to you about Orange County beer, brewed right in Middletown. Uh, this vote may provide an opportunity for new and different, a new and different future for intermunicipal interaction. My analysis of this complicated issue is threefold. First, process. Second, policy for Monroe. Third, connection to my district. First, process. Last year, I initiated a type of Orange County shuttle diplomacy. I'm proud of my early efforts to establish a new start, new opportunities for cooperation and respect. I envisioned a parallel forum, parallel forums with adjacent municipalities, but things developed differently. Negotiations appeared to have been outsourced to United Monroe rather than through a legislative committee. United Monroe, I found your three leaders to be quite capable, and I appreciate uh, that you're capable in protecting your interests, and I appreciate your filling a, a leadership void or a vacuum. I do not believe that the meetings without accountability were required to reach the agreements that have been announced. The awkward process which is utilized was avoidable and is unjustified. More, more important to the people, most of you, I'm sure, maybe even most legislators, uh, is not the policy, I mean, not the policy, not the process. People seem to get bored with process. It's, it's really important to me, being a legislator, because that's the tools that we use and it ensures fairness. But most people say, let's get to, uh, to policy. And the policy is really the meat and potatoes of the subject. We know that the vote before us is, like others have said, not to have a division, but to allow to vote on the ballot, right? So the people of Monroe could decide this issue. They could discuss the merits and advantages and compare them with the problems and difficulties associated with expansive growth. And it should be discussed and debated thoroughly. 
And I think that it's appropriate that the people of Monroe be the deciders since you're primarily impacted. I, I hope that it expands so that other municipalities could be involved as well. Third factor is how it relates to my hometown. Well, most of you know I'm from Middletown. I guess most of the legislators have been here around. I've been around here a long time, right? And uh, they kind of tease me about how I bring into focus Middletown. So I'm going to do that in my remaining months at least one more time. And that has to do with Curios Joel's relationship with Middletown. And I'm proud to, uh, to announce that earlier today we have a signed memorandum of understanding between officials from Curios Joel and, and the mayor of the city of Middletown. And that, that will dismiss, terminate, and otherwise void the paper which authenticates the existence of the lawsuit and uh, that will, both parties agree that that will be terminated. And that will keep in the spirit of this new beginning that we have and new com communications between mm -hmm. municipalities. Also, I'd like to thank uh, the, the leadership of Curios Joel for reimbursing Middletown for expenses that have been involved in that lawsuit. I think that uh, KJ and the proposed town uh, also made a, a, a far-reaching statement and compromise as part of our memorandum. And that is that those, those individuals representing KJ and the curious job, let me be respectful, and, uh, and Palm Tree will not solicit, seek, work, or otherwise be involved with changing their status again for no less than 15 years, uh, not to become a city. Now, that hasn't been brought up, though, I have to admit. I'm, I heard the, the county issue that is. But uh, for me, the, the, uh, the possibility of being a city is a live prospect because uh, Middletown, Newburgh, and Port Jervis, being the three cities, have uh, many disadvantages in our budget, their budgetary system and our county charter. But the one thing that we do have is uh, a, a favorable distribution of sales tax revenue, and that's a lifeline. And that's vitally important to my district, and I appreciate that uh, Curious Joel has said that they would, for a 15-year period, or, or they can negotiate that in the future as well, that they would forbear any interest in establishing themselves as a city. So I think that's those are significant achievements, and I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Paduke, Legislator Paduke, who joined me in that effort, as did Mr. Kulisek and Mr. Dillard. And the four of us are the Democratic legislators that represent the urban areas of this county. So, um, yeah, there's a lot more work to do, and I think, that, uh, I think that we should all commit ourselves, all of us up here, all legislators, all elected officials, not only county elected officials, but the municipal officials from Curious Joel, Monroe, and other municipalities in this county, since we have a chance now to, re, to, to recalibrate, we have a chance to start again in a more respectful dialogue, and I think we should reach higher. And it's not just wild idealism that I'm speaking about. I'm talking about uh, a real effort, and it mean, it's going to take a lot of hard work and I look forward to being a part of that process, whether I'm a legislator or not. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When I was asked three or four months ago where I stood on the referendum issue, I was a hard line no. A number of things happened, occurred in the ensuing months. One item was the reduction in acreage from the 382 down to 220 acres. The other item is all we all went through in uh, June and July was the petition process for those of us running for re-election or election in this case. 
we got an opportunity to speak with our constituents one-on-one, -on -one, knocking on doors, asking for their signature, but also to talk to them about what concerns them. And I made a concentrated effort, especially in the part of Chester, which uh, the residents and children go to the Monroe Woodbury School District, and many of them have the uh, Monroe, New York 10950 mailing address. They were very concerned about the school district issues, and I was happy to see that new school district boundary lines were drawn. It made it a lot more palatable at that time. I felt also that if it was a Chester issue, I'd want my residents of Chester to be able to have the vote to determine their future. Monroe residents feel the same way. The uh, part of my district in the Monroe Woodbury School District felt a little left out there, but it's the town of Monroe issue, not just strictly the school boundary lines. I wouldn't want to take the rights away from my constituents or any voters in Orange County to not be able to determine their fate. Uh, like I said, I was three or four months ago, it was a hard line no. I will be voting tonight in favor of the resolution. Thank you, Chairman. So I agree with uh, my colleague. Uh, Legislator Berkman with his comments on the city, but I just remind him that I represent a small sliver of the city of Middletown also. So I was left out of that process. Uh, it was terrible, terrible. So a number of us are not happy with the process, but I do want to commend uh, Chairwoman of the Rules Committee, Katie Benelli, for the hard work she's done over the past year. Uh, although I only started January 1st, but we all are up to speed with every facet of this issue, thanks to the hard work of the Rules Committee Chairman, Kate, Katie Benelli. So thank you for your work on this, and hopefully on the last speaker. Thank you. Anyone else that has spoken wants to speak? Sorry, Jim, I'm going to say a few words about this. <laughs> I'll try not to belabor it. I don't have anything written down. But uh, we are at the table right now. All 21 legislators are here. You have the resolution before you. If you don't like what's in the resolution, don't vote for it. I mean, it's, there's nothing fancy about it. It's the same resolution that was at Rules. Rules Chair Katie Vanelli explained it very well. Um, you know, this isn't, hasn't happened very quickly. We've had this petition, as Assemblyman Scoop has said, for over a year. Over a year. And I told our reporter, Chris McKenna, who sits the fourth row back to the far, my far left, uh, a long time ago, many months ago, that if we didn't have any kind of compromise from that community, the Monroe community, the entire Monroe community, that this wasn't going to see the light of day as far as the vote goes. And we sat on it for a while. We didn't do anything in the rules, or we didn't do anything as a legislative body. I mean, we had a committee of four that tried, but we didn't get anything. You got somewhere, Jeff. But I mean, and Jeff, you had 30 meetings by your own proclamation down in, in the area, and you tried, and I commend you for that. You tried to get some resolve. And, but at the end of the day, we were not going to get any resolve unless the 2,300 or so applicants from the town of Monroe and the village of Kirsch Joel changed this petition. It was their petition. This, this legislation did not initiate on the legislative side. It came to us, a petition from that town, or those 2,300 residents, or applicants, should I say, and anybody could have negotiated with those applicants. Anybody. Legislators, foreign governments, the villages down in that area, the towns throughout the county, anybody could have negotiated with them to change their petition. Okay? Tried to get a meeting with the town in Monroe, and that was very difficult. Very difficult. I mean, they were willing to do it. Harley was willing to meet in an open forum. Um, we operate in a committee structure. We don't have an open forum on every issue. We don't, Matt, no offense, but the, you're on the golf committee. We don't convene the whole legislature for your committee meetings. Occasionally, rules committees, we invite the entire legislature. And, and everybody was invited to the last rules meeting for this very same resolution. Okay? We didn't a operate in a vacuum. It's, it's, nothing was secretive, really. I mean, I invited, initially, I wasn't going to meet like United United Rome because I was criticized for it. Then Harry Poor asked me to meet with Mike Egan in my office, and I did that. And we had a good conversation. 
And subsequent to that, we still tried to get a meeting with Monroe. No offense, and it, it was difficult. It was very difficult. And everybody tried. Everybody tried. And we were going to, Katie asked me to meet with the, the town coalitions after that. We were planning to do that. But this had to be done ex expeditiously. And no offense, Mr. Uh, I don't know your name up next to Assembly Mascoupas. If we didn't act on this now, it would be a biennial election two years hence. Okay? Nobody wanted to take the chance with special legislation that we were going to get a special election midterm. Okay? So that's the hurried nature of it now. And we had to do it in July and so forth to get it here tonight for a referendum in November. Okay? That's why it was hurried. But it really wasn't hurried because it's been on our table for a while. All right? So, we had a meeting with United Monroe. Probably only had three meetings with them, Jeff. Probably only three meetings, maybe four. One in the county exec's conference room. And I was very nervous about that first meeting. And I invited the legislators that cover the town of Monroe. Michael Amo, Myrna Chemnitz, and Katie Benelli, and myself, and the county exec, and a few other, David Church, and a few people from the county, the county exec. And the first meeting, I was very nervous about it. I thought it was gonna be hell, like, the meeting's down in the town of Monroe, no offense. <laughs> but it was very calm, everybody was respectful. United Monroe representatives, John, Emily, <coughs> and Mike were very quiet. Adele, you, you did most of the talking at that initial meeting. But it was a good meeting, and, and, I, and there was a lot of give and take. And so what? So what? It was good. It was good. And we had a couple more meetings after that. And we never thought, Michael never thought we were going to get here tonight. You never thought, he, he was a doubter. I was a doubter, but you know, after two or three meetings, we said, go meet yourselves and see if you can work out this other agreement with a 10-year moratorium. And subsequently, Blooming Grove has a 10-year moratorium, which helps Katie out a lot because she wrestled with this. John Bureau wrestled with this. He's in a tough district. A lot of his constituents said, vote for it, and some said, don't give AJ, no offense, anything, because it's just that perception. Jimmy DeSalvo really wrestles with it because part of his district you know, said, don't vote for it in the Woodbury portion. A lot of people are saying yes, and some are saying no. But it's, it, he's been wrestling with it a lot. But let me tell you something. Was Diane even your, your teacher at, uh, at Burke? She may be. Yeah. Well, I was told always to listen to your teacher, and she said to vote yes. So <laughs> that let you off the hook. She, she didn't retire because of me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> if you had him, she probably my condolences. I know, what you're, I know what you're going through. But seriously, you know, we can talk about secret meetings. I mean, come this is what we're voting on tonight. I don't think there's anything secretive about this. It, it, you know, invited the legislators that represent that district and it blossomed from there. And now you have the two county exec candidates on board. You have Assemblyman Scoofus who come on and, and is trying to work something out in the town of Woodbury. You know, I, I believe in home rule. I'm from the village of Montgomery. I've been mayor a long time, 27 years. I believe in home rule. I, why would we not allow the town of Monroe to vote for this? We would allow the town of Crawford, the town of Walk Hill, the village of Cornwall, the village of Chester, the village of Warwick, the town of Warwick, and so on and so forth. We would allow them to vote for this. The people there want separation, equal separation. That's what they want. That's what they're telling us. I think loud and clear, most of them. So I cannot see, believe me, I believe in home rule, but I tell you, I think the state should have a little bit of restrictions on zoning and, and a ceiling on growth. No offense, really. I, I do. I mean, it's just, but I believe in home rule, and I've, I've got to believe that we should allow this referendum. I think it's the right thing to do. I encourage you all to vote for it. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? No. Amo? Absolutely yes. Anagostakis? Yes. Benton? Yes. Berkman? Yes. Benelli? Yes. Cheney? Yes. Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Baggione? Yes. Hines? No. Chemnitz? Yes. Kulasek? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Ruskevich? Yes. Sullivan? No. Biro? Yes. Brescia? 18 eyes, 3 no's.
Okay, I guess number three. You guys can all leave now. <laughs> Legislators Hines, DeSalvo, Bonasek, Ikes, and Benton. A local law introductory number three of 2017. A local law repealing the wireless communication surcharge authorized by Article 6 of the County Law of the State of New York and imposing the wireless <coughs> excuse me, communication surcharges pursuant to the authority of New York State Tax Law Section 186G. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Korsak, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Number five. Legislators Hines, Fagione, Bonasek, and Ikes. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature urging New York State Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to sign Senate Bill S-2516, Assembly Bill A-473, amending General Municipal Law Section 207C to provide disability coverage to county probation officers. Okay, all Republicans are up? Yes. All Democrats? Michael? No? Yeah. Okay, everybody. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Amo, Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 ayes. Number six. Legislators Chemnitz and Bonasek, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Planning to accept and appropriate first instance Federal Highway Administration FHWA and Federal Transit Administration FTA planning funds pursuant to section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, I'm sorry, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number seven through 11, collectively. No, sorry. Uh, there are no objections, I'm sorry. Rants. Okay, thank you, Antoinette. Open up in overtime. Okay, roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 12. 
Number 12. Legislators Benton and O'Donnell, resolution allowing the Department of Finance to return interfund financing for various completed capital projects. Second. Roll call. Yes. Turnbull, Amo, yep. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Pulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vera, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 13. Legislators Benton and Anagnostakis, resolution allowing the Commissioner of Finance and Budget Director to adjust capital project budgets and unissued bonds. Second. Motion. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSavo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number 14. Legislators Benton and Kulisek, resolution approving the release of the county's interest in and to a certain detail parcel to the previous owner of record pursuant to section 5, paragraph B1 of local law number 2 of 2010. Second. Discussion? Bonasek? Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Number 15. Legislator Benton, resolution authorizing the private sale and conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County, pursuant to section 10184 of the Real Property Tax Law and Orange County amended local law number two of 2010. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, we'll do 16 and 17 collectively if there are no objections. Second. Roll call. Yeah. Oh, DeSalvo's um, added on to 15? 16 and 17. 16 and 17. <laughs> okay, roll call. Bonasek, Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 18. Legislators Paduk, Paduk and Benelli, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Public Works to accept grant funds from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. DeSalvo Adam. All Dems. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, mm. Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 19. Legislators Ekis and Benton, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Office of Community Development to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Department of Housing and Urban Development pursuant to section 99-H of general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Yes. Uh, Jones added. Okay, Salvo. Salvo. Salvo added. Benelli added. Early added too. Roll call. Monica? Yes. Turnbull, Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number 20. Legislators Cheney and Ekis, resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2017 county budget for the Orange County Office of Community Development, pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Yes, Katie added, Curly added, DeSalvo added, mm -hmm. added. Okay, roll call. Duke added, sorry. Bonasek, Turnbull, Amo, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, 21 through 28 is second. 
Okay, roll call. All Dems. All Dems. On this one. Okay. Not all. All Republicans? No? Okay. Some issues on the couple. All right, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard, DeSavo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 ayes. And number 29. Legislators Kulis, I'm sorry, Paduk, Turbo, Benton, and Agnostakis, O'Donnell, Ekis, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Ruskevich, Sullivan, and Berkman. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create supervising public health investigator venereal disease at the Orange County Department of Health pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Bonasek? Yes. Yeah. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Yes. Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? Yeah. <laughs> Ikis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Brescia, the 21 eyes. All right, number 30. Okay. You want to recess? Okay. <laughs> Paduk, <laughs> legislators, <laughs> wait a minute. Legislators Paduk, Turnbull, Benton, and Agnostakis, O'Donnell, Ikas, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Ruskevich, Sullivan, and Berkman. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to amend Act Number 56 of 1989 at the Orange County Department of Health to add a public health investigator, parentheses, venereal disease, position is grant funded pursuant to Section 2.02 I of the Orange County Charter. Question. Roll call. Anasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ikis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Brescia? 21 ayes. Okay, 31. Legislators Turnbull, Paduk, Anagnostakis, O'Donnell, Ikis, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Ruskevich, Sullivan, and Berkman. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create the title of Senior Youth Compliance Worker per diem at the Orange County Department of Health pursuant to Section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Can you hear me on that, too? Yes, I can. We can. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikis, Fagione, Fed, I, um, sorry, Ikis, Fagione, Hines, Hemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes, one no. Okay, 32. Legislators Turnbull, Fagione, Benton, and Benelli. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create senior accountant in and abolish accountant at the Orange County Department of Finance pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ikis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, we have six speakers signed up. First speaker, Jerry Cook from Mount Hope regarding CPD and Lego Land. Now I'm Jerry Cook. I live in a town in Mount Hope. Uh, with CPV, uh, I'm a little concerned over the air quality. There's a chance that the gas line might not, it's up the FERC, uh, the gas line might not go through and it might be, uh, the company's willing to burn more oil. And that's going to give us a whole different outlook on the environmental impacts of it. And I also do believe the town of uh, Way Way Yonder only allowed a five mile radius of an impact zone. And uh, this is going to be a lot greater. So, so I'm going to ask the county to take up interest in an air quality study. I know it's not the county's job, or at least send a letter to the TEC uh, asking about that. Okay, my second thing I want to talk about is Legoland. Legoland stocked a massive hit 
it would drop $220 million. And one of the reasons for it is lack of sales of the toys in the United States and Europe. They're booming in China. But if it's losing popularity, before we spend a dime on building our driveway for them and any other funding, we, I really want you to look at the future of we is it a diminishing thing? So we should be, I want you to be very much aware of it as a business people. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Scott Martens, West Town, uh, Public Health and Safety. Hello. I was actually going to tell a similar joke than the guy, so I'm just not going to say it. I have a whole different thing. Uh, um, Scott Martens, uh, you all know me by now. Um, I'm here to address you about the problems inherent with the CPB power plant. Um, I first want to give you guys an update because last week the New York State DEC denied the water quality permit for the Valley Lateral Pipeline that is necessary for this plant to become operational. I know Jerry said that they are allowed to burn oil, diesel oil, for 30 days, but if, you can only, if a power plant can only run for 30 days in a year, it's not really feasible. So what this decision means from the DEC for you all is that the door's open. It's not done deal. There's still time. It's not too late for you to make the right decision and stand up for your constituents. Overwhelming public support to shut this place down and not allow it to happen. Anybody out there that is properly informed about this issue is against it. It's common sense at this point with the climate change issues that we're seeing everywhere. And I know time and time again, oh, this is not a county issue. It's obviously a county issue. It went before the county in 2012. You all signed a, a resolution voicing your support for it. As did Steve Newhouse in a letter written by Maureen Hallahan to Governor Cuomo, signed, voicing his support. But now, he's a smart man. He reevaluated. He said, you know what? I need to relook at this. And he decided that he's now against the CPV power plant. This is the county executive. Now, what about all of you? Are you going to reevaluate your position now knowing that the DEC themselves has denied the water quality permit on the grounds that the original environmental impact statement was insufficient? What that means is that if you did educate yourselves based on what was given, it was wrong. And the DEC has now admitted that. So it's up to you all to decide, like I've said to you many times now, whether or not you're going to stand up for your constituents and actually do something about this. Or you're just going to remain silent and do nothing, like you have been. It was amazing for me to be here today to witness such support for an issue. Almost all of you spoke about it. And I'm, and I'm thinking that, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking to myself, we get, we get all this support for this issue, but not one of you wants to open up a line of communication about a ma the biggest power plant in New York State, right next to Middletown, the city of Middletown. The environmental justice impact alone is staggering, like I've said before. It's unbelievable. Thanks, Scott. I just want you guys to think about the children involved here. Think about the first responders and who are going to have to respond to this and put their lives at risk for the decision that we make. Martens, Town of Minnesing, good evening. It never occurred to me that I would have to worry that the largest frack gas power plant in New York would be built in my community. Every time I drive into Middletown, anytime I need food or gas or to take my children to school, there it is, CPV. Until recently, most people had no idea what was being built on Route 6. Even with construction near completion, with soaring smokestacks, to this day there's no sign indicating what the CPV power plant is. 
A few local residents received their first and only notice from CBB on August 1st of this year, the day before the DEC public comment session at the Paramount Theater. However, a letter sent to Governor Cuomo in May of 2014 from the Orange County Partnership reveals that this power plant has been in the works for more than a decade. Touting the signature and support of elected officials, including Executive Newhouse, this letter is, is an example of the lies and misinformation that surrounds CPV. At no point has CPV conducted hundreds of outreach meetings, well beyond what we normally witness, nor is it minimally intrusive to existing neighborhoods and businesses. The unprecedented level of support within the Orange County community is blatantly false. There are no environmental benefits. The methane emissions are far worse than coal power plants. Even with the closing of Indian Point, New York currently has an energy surplus. CPV and Orange County Partnership quietly pushed this through and sold this as economic development. The only economic benefits are temporary union construction jobs and the profit CPV, a foreign-owned company, will reap. Most importantly, the people in charge forgot to tell the public and include us in the discussion. Communication is key. Just as with Legoland and Goshen, the town master plan was manipulated to change zoning laws to benefit those corporations. How long must we endure this false narrative of the bridge fuel? When can we finally transition to renewable energy? That's where the real money and jobs lie. CPV is slated to operate for the next 40 years. Am I going to have to breathe cancer-causing toxins and contam contaminated air until I'm 77 years old? My boys would be 41 and 43. How will Orange County's aquifers hold up? Will we, will we be able to drink our water? We don't have the luxury to wait 40 years to find out. History will acknowledge this grave mistake. And I realize that some of you don't care. You have said as much to my husband, to the people of Orange County, with your silence and disregard. So I'm speaking to the leaders among you, the ones who see the long view of this picture. What's gonna to happen to our lovely county when the pipelines start to leak, when the water goes bad? when the air turns sour, when people get sick. Just look at the world around you. Harvey, Irma, Sandy, Katrina, the fires raging in the west and the floods in the east, the warming, waters and wa warming winds and waters are causing climate catastrophes. We want honesty, we want transparency and accountability in government. We want to be included in decision making of this magnitude. We want our officials to have a fiduciary responsibility to us to give the people the best deal, not these corporations. In light of science, in light of the New York DEC rejecting the permit for the Valley Lateral Pipeline, we ask you to do the right thing and to support the resolution in opposition of this frack gas pipeline. Protect Orange County, stop CPB, stop the Our Eastern Sea Recovery. Hello, everybody. Tom Denny from Wei Wei Onda. Uh, I became interested in this power plant when I started getting headaches. I needed to go to a uh, specialist for an MRI. Uh, turns out that the headaches were not due to a cancer. Um, I started reading on Google, uh, investigating, and found out about the Baum family who moved away from the menacing compressor station because the husband was getting so sick at home when he went to New York City to his job with low ceilings and fluorescent lighting, his headaches would go away. He was being poisoned by the menacing compressor station. There is a study out, if any of you want to um, see the study about the toxins that come out of the menacing compressor station, I can uh, put you in touch with that. Uh, my wife and I recently spoke at the EPA. We heard many stories of what's happening in Pennsylvania. Uh, we have friends in Pennsylvania who can't drink their water. They get, uh, they get rashes if they try and take a shower. They have water buffaloes. Cabot Oil has bought them. Um, treatment centers for their houses, and they've got gag orders. Um, it, fracking has destroyed Pennsylvania. We just went out to Colorado. It's all over Colorado, Utah. Um, in Kansas, there are wind, wind farms that would make anybody um, drop their mouth open. Uh, thousands of wind uh, turbines creating energy. <clears throat> I'm confused why, uh, with climate change on the rise, Anybody who denies climate change needs to go back to kindergarten and read Dick and Jane because climate change is real. Um, and it, we, need to, um, we need to get off of fossil fuels. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard has just come out with a bill. She's 
going to be presenting called the Off Bill um, or the Off Act, um, Off Fossil Fuels, where she uh, wants the country to be off fossil fuels by 2035. Um, we've got Scott Pruitt leading the EPA. That's as bad as Betty Crocker running a diet camp. Thank you. Mary Lou Dietrich from Milltown, the Dallas CPD. Mary Lou here. Okay, next up, Rhoda Mack from Monroe. Critical look at the CPB power plant for OC. So I come from a family of farmers and scientists. And one thing that I've learned is look at the facts. And this CPV power plant has come in kind of under the radar. And it's come in with um, our assumptions about growth based on last century. But we're in a new century, very different now. Um, as an aside, if you look at Houston, one of the problems with Houston was that those environmentalists were saying, oh, you can't build in the, in the wetlands, you can't just um, concrete over all this area that um, water is needing to percolate through, and they were tossed out because they weren't, they weren't looked at, they weren't seriously considered. We have to get past that mindset. We're in that mindset here. And it's time to look at the fact. Um, my brother is a professor at Cornell University tells me that one of the really good guys is Dr. Tony Ingrafia. And you really need to look at his expert testimony on this power plant. Dr. Ingrafia started out as a scientist engineer trying to figure out how to do fracking safely. He was working with companies in Pennsylvania until he realized no matter what engineering he came up with, this is a catastrophic idea. Now we have this plant coming into being in Orange County that is going to necessitate 40 years and over 8,000, 40 years of continued fracking, hello? Which century are we trying to live in? Um, 8,000 new fracking wells in Pennsylvania. Um, this power plant is going to add 10% to New York State's greenhouse gases. 10%. We're trying to go in the other direction. One of the other things that we're, we're living in the past about is that we're saying, well, this is a bridge of fuel, and I heard that from a lot of people who are in um, government. It's a bridge of fuel. It is not. We, if you, if you look at people who are really well educated in terms of what we need to be doing now, we need to be jumping onto the future. We need to be jumping into the 21st century. We can't wait 40 years. Thank you.